what she wanna do Lower to the grave, tell you like it is to your face She don't play, play Every chick down for it all, I know that she a boss No competition, no loss From the Midwest to the A Autumn got you tuning in, no delay Ooh, get you right every time Keep you laughing on a dime Tell you truth, no lies So you can live your best life Cover all topics, no limits Got some for your mama and your children No holding back, no gimmicks Coming on strong, get straight to business Oh yeah, what she wanna do Hey, it's your girl Autumn, and I welcome you back to the Lit Life Podcast, where I encourage you to live your life autonomously. It's still Black History Month, and that is why we are here and we are black as hell. So <laughs> <laughs> today I have another special guest. This is actually somebody that I know personally. I have met, I have kicked it with. She has probably seen me at my drunken worst. (laughs) (laughs) I want y'all to welcome Dr. Janelle Simmons to the podcast. Yay! Hey, it's so great to be here. Thank you. Yes, it's so great to finally connect with you. Um, I know we haven't seen each other in a few years, probably since 2015, maybe. Oh, wow. It's been a while. It's been a while. I want to say either 15 or 16 was the last trip that I went on. So just a little bit of context for those of you um, who may not know, Janelle and I met uh, during what it was, it's a, a trip called professional relaxation. Mm-hmm. And I think what was my first trip was Cabo. I don't know how I could forget that, but it was Cabo San Lucas. And that's when I met Janelle and it was, it's basically like, a, do, are they still traveling? I haven't traveled. Yes. With the, okay, good. Yeah. I, I haven't traveled yeah. with the group in so long, uh, but it's always, I used to rant and rave about it all the time. And it was always a great, a great ordeal. And I have now have the pleasure of meeting someone like Janelle, who is great, right? Like I just, I have been following your Instagram and your, um, and on Facebook whenever I get on Facebook, cause I don't really be on there, but <laughs> <laughs> I've been following your Instagram and over the last few years, you have done so much and we're going to get all into that. But first I want to know, how have you been holding up? Like how ha- I have to ask mm. everybody that hasn't been like, you know, ever been on the podcast. Cause mm-hmm. my normal guests, we talk about the stuff all the time, but I want to know, first of all, where, where are you located? Are you in North Carolina, North Carolina? Okay. Yes. How have you been holding up over the last now creeping up on a year? Ooh, yes. It's, <laughs> it's been challenging. Um, especially um, I'm working from home, which has been good, but it also has its downfalls. Um, I'm used to getting that I'm out and about usually, and everything that I do, I'm usually out and about. So being stuck and at, at home, I you know, I understand the need to be safe. So I'm following all rules and not really going to a lot of places, but at the same time, it it drives me um crazy. Right. Um, you know, it's easy to be distracted at home mm-hmm. when when you have to work at home. Um, mentally, it's just it is it's hard. It's definitely taken its toll um, on me because I'm used to to being you know active and traveling, especially, and not being able to travel and see people, mm-hmm. just hug your family and and everything. It's it's, it's really it's rough. It is. It has been very, very challenging. Um, And you know me, I was always on the go, always Mm -hmm. on the go. So for me to be, I even travel for work. So for me to just be stuck, (laughs) it's just like every day I just wake up like, okay, another day closer. Hopefully we're just another day closer. What do you think you're going to do once you feel safe going out and about? Like, what do you think your first thing is that you're going to do? Like, are you going to well, plan? I have, 
trip or? Well, I actually have trips planned. It's just whether or not I can make them. Gotcha. <laughs> and I'm still traveling with professional relaxation. So last year's trip got postponed to this year, which is okay. St. Lucia. And I've okay. never been to St. Lucia. So I'm looking forward to taking that trip in September. But my niece is supposed to graduate in Missouri in May. And I actually have pageant stuff to do in Atlanta in right. March, um, the end of March, early April. So hopefully everything will still be, you know, okay and ready to go, but definitely like international travel is, is really my thing. So if something comes up and they say, oh, you can, it's safe to go somewhere to another country and I don't have to wait until September. <laughs> right. I, and I think, I think one of the biggest things for me in traveling outside of the country, just seeing everything that has happened, like, am I going to be able to get back in? Like, am I going to be, am I going to come back? Or like, how's this going to work? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Question. I mean, because people have been stuck, you know, or early on when the pandemic hit, there, there were people that were literally stuck, like in other countries or remember the mm -hmm. ship, remember that ship that was the cruise ship and they were stuck on there. And I just don't, uh, that's just one of the things I'm just like, I'm not trying to be stuck somewhere that I don't need to be. It's just not that serious. So, but anyways, I'm glad. I mean, you still look good. Seems like you're still in, in good spirits. So that's good. So I'm going to just go ahead and get this show started. I forgot to tell you, I played this little ghetto ass clip. Hold on. <laughs> So this is everybody's favorite part of the Lit Life Podcast. Um, for those of you, if this is your first time listening, uh, welcome to the Lit Life Podcast. And if it's, if you're a returning listener, you know I appreciate you. And I know y'all sitting here waiting to see who we going to tell to shut the fuck up. So did you bring a shut the fuck up award? Yes. And surprisingly, I picked that Gorilla Glue girl. <laughs> girl. I was feeling for her at one point in the very beginning, but now I'm like, this chick has now monetized on everything. And it seems like this was intentional. I guess she didn't realize how bad it was going to get, but she is now verified on Instagram. She got mm -hmm. all these subscribers on YouTube, all this money she got from a GoFundMe. And last I checked, it was like $7,000 she had. You know, I'm, I, 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 now I'm, I'm just mad. Yeah, and I and you I think what you were doing. Yeah, and I think too, Janelle, when she went, I think I read somewhere that she went to the hospital. They said it was going to take twenty hours to do whatever they were going to do, and mm -hmm. she decided to go home and do it. Like I don't know if she went home so that she could document it or what. I don't know. I I just think it's so wild. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I I'm just done with her. She I I lost all hope in her because I was just like, oh, maybe she got it confused with gorillas, gorilla snot, you know, the gel. Mm -hmm. Only to find out that no, it looks like she did that intentionally, and that kind of mm -hmm. you know, and of course now she's documenting everything and making money off of it, which. I mean, it's smart, but at the same time, I think that was her intentions all along. Yeah, I, I'm not going to, I don't really feel like it was smart at all. I feel like it was actually pretty stupid because I'm thinking to myself, what's, what is going to happen with your scalp? Like, like, why would you do that? And then the other thing that my reason would be for telling her to shut the fuck up is that she's actually going to try to sue Gorilla Glue. Oh yes. And yeah, that yeah, that's another thing that I can't get. I don't understand why. Why? It 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 just I mean money. Money. I get I don't know. I mean I guess you could kind of say big up to her for monetizing and you know getting something out of it, but I just can't could not see myself putting gorilla glue. Like, have you ever used gorilla glue for anything? I sure have. And that stuff is potent. Yes. Have you ever gotten it on your fingers? Yes. And it takes forever. For, forever. <laughs> and I don't even like using it for that reason. It's just as, as good as it is, it's hard to get all the stuff off. Yeah. Yep, so. yep. I think I may have used it once 
and was like, I don't ever want to really want to use because I'm afraid that my fingers are going to get stuck together. So mm -hmm. whatever. But yes, that's a good one. Like she definitely deserved an award. So who I am yes. bringing to the Shut the Fuck Up award table is Representative John Jordan from oh. uh, Ohio, my home state, who just is always something going on. So last week, uh, when was it? Episode 63. Um, mm -hmm. I was on, I had a, a gentleman uh, by the name of Country Boy from the One Mic History Podcast. Shout out to him. And we both came with the same Shut the Fuck Up Award. And it was for Marjorie Green, uh, Marjorie Taylor Green. So, you know, she was the represent or whatever it is she does that just whatever it was she said. I can't even remember at this point. But it was whack. So. This guy gets up here and defends her and says, everyone has done things they wish they didn't do. Now I kind of remembered what she was saying. She, it was a bunch of just racial stuff, you know, the, the, the normal, mm. the normal, you know, white woman who is going to be out here just saying stupid racial things. Um, mm you know just just stupid everything she was ve very um she was all for like the whole like thing that happened at the capitol like she's liking all these different posts all of these like conspiracy theory type posts and stuff on social media and then she got up on the news last week and was like you know we all basically what he said we all make mistakes and if you're how can you judge me you know you can't judge me and they took all of her her little uh duties away or whatever so she felt like that was a great thing she she just said well i guess that's a good thing no nah, whatever so this week I'm telling her colleague to shut the fuck up because how <laughs> dare you? Like, yeah. I, I just don't get it. You know, I, it's so hard for me to grasp um, people who do racist things. You know what I mean? It's so hard because I'm just, I'm yeah. not that person. So it's so hard for me to, um, to understand you, you being so far off about some about somebody because of the color of their skin and then you come back and say oh what well, everybody makes mistakes mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. no that's not how any of this works so that is my shut the fuck up award for my what is this second or third episode of black history month so there you go <laughs> all right <laughs> love it i love it so i brought Janelle here because again I think you have done so many great things and the the first thing that came to mind um was the fact that you are a plus side model like certified she's not an Instagram model you know what I'm saying like she literally like this no shade to the Instagram models because y'all be getting y'all's but a real like I feel some type of way because I'm sitting here talking to a real live model who I know and I just think that is so great so I want you to tell us how you about your path to being a plus size model sure well it was definitely unorthodox because it wasn't in my plans to become a model I have over 15 years of experience working in higher education. So that was my background. And I, you know, that was what I was going to be doing. And then the university that I was working for, they went through some organizational changes and let go folks in the process. And I was one of those folks that um, didn't have a job. And for almost a year, I was trying to figure out what I was going to do with myself. So I was applying for different jobs, you know, in higher ed and nothing came up so I, you know my you know my unemployment had <laughs> was about to run out uh my insurance was about to run out because they gave me a severance package and everything right and i just i wasn't sure what i was going to do so i had a soror and one of my sorors was telling me you know i know someone who is looking for brand ambassadors and models for her cosmetics line and not, you know, not really, you know, you know, paying, but just something for me to do because she always felt that I was always so, you know, 
beautiful. I should go out and do stuff. And people told me that all the time. But I was at a point at that moment where I had not loved myself. Um, mm. Even prior to um, losing my job, I hated how I looked. I thought I was ugly. I thought I was fat. And I figured, okay, well, I don't have anything to do. You know, I get out the house because I really I couldn't find anything. Right. So I went. I was like, what the heck? And that it was actually snowing that day. And I drove out in the snow and I figured I'll do it. What the heck? What do I have to lose only to be selected? And then that opportunity led to other opportunities um, because one of the other models was planning a fashion show. So she was like, well, do you want, you know, I want you to do a fashion show. I'm like, okay. And then from that, I met other people who were like, oh, you should do this show. We have this. And at this point, I had, you know, I did find a job working at a nonprofit, which is where I'm at now. And I, throughout that process, I started to really love myself mm -hmm. and just, I actually, I just started enjoying what I was doing and meeting people, which I, you know, I love meeting people. So modeling gave me an opportunity to get back to reconnecting with folks mm -hmm. and, and really seeing who I am on the inside you know, as much as the outside and realize, you know what? I am beautiful. I am beautiful. And it just, one thing led to another, which led to another opportunity and the rest is history pretty much. <laughs> that is such an amazing story. I, I, all the time on this platform, I talk about um, loving yourself and, mm -hmm. and I talk about uh, doing what makes you happy because that's a part of loving yourself mm -hmm. and just kind of taking a look even after you've taken a look in the mirror and you know you're like okay yeah I'm cute but digging down deep on the inside sometimes it takes an event sometimes it takes for something to happen for you to really sit with yourself and say to, to even be able to say I don't really I'm not really feeling myself like so when you got into so you got into modeling and you started do you is there an event like within the modeling like is there something that just kind of clicked with you that you were like you know what I really am the shit like despite whatever it is I may see some days in the mirror like what do you can, can do you remember you know that feeling I or what happened I think it was probably my first fashion show where I, you know, I had already done a few shoots for the cosmetics line. And then I, you know, I think my first fashion show where, you know, I was getting my face done and getting, you know, dressed by different people and, you know, walking the stage, you know, the runway. I think that started everything because then I, I started, you know, doing more shows, you know, going to more model calls mm -hmm. and, and participating. And I didn't always get, you know, chosen, you know, because there's certain looks and things like that, but I had the confidence enough to go and do it. And then there was a modeling competition that I participated in. And I was the only plus size model that participated. I didn't, I didn't even go to the semifinals, which I, you know, part of me thinks that I don't even think they would have had anything for me for the finals because they were dressing the models in the finals. And I don't mm -hmm. think, they had, you know, it was, it was just little things like that that I might have noticed. But I was also still new and still learning things. But like all of that just kept, you know, making me want to, you know, just do more and work harder. And I've just really, really have enjoyed the experience and and being able to be a a, a human uh, clothesline, so to speak, or hanger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you know when you're when you're modeling clothes, but then also, you know, for just some of the editorials I've done in the prints, just showing just different themes and other sides of me as well. So, so how hard is it? Like, how hard is it to like have to I mean, because you almost have to kind of, it's, uh, I don't know, but I was going to say you almost have to kind of be perfect for a shoot. You know what I mean? Like, how hard is it to, like, get yourself up to, you know, to the time to where you're in front of the camera? Like, what's what's your, your thought process like? 
It's um, it varies. It just depends on what's happening, what's going on in my mind prior to the shoot. One thing about it is hard because regardless of what you've got going on in your personal life, you you have to be ready for the camera because it will show. It will definitely show in the camera. If you're upset, if you're you know sad, it, it shows in your face. It shows in how you pose. So you have to leave all of that at home or wherever and and not bring it with you to the studio or to the set or to wherever you're having the shoot okay so it's right. very very hard yes yeah, it's, it's hard for just for that part alone and we haven't even talked about poses and, and right and, and candid shots and things like that <laughs> so speaking of poses and stuff like so how was it i i always i i say every like other month i'm gonna do a photo shoot right and so I try some things on my own. I see like there's uh, this one lady I follow on Instagram. I can't even think of her name, but she does like this how to pose, you know, sitting down or how to pose. How did it how long did it take you to like learn that or or it, it, what did it come naturally or does it kind of come naturally now that you've been doing this a while? Like how was it hard at first to kind of take hard. that direction? It's hard at first, but as you, you know, do more shoots and get more comfortable, it becomes easier. That's good. That's good. Because yeah. I'd I be trying, you know, I'd be at home trying to be my own photographer. It don't really be working out, working out all the time. But every <laughs> once in a while, I get <laughs> every once in a while, I get a good one. And then I'd be like, dang, how did I do that? And I can never like recreate it or whatever. But kudos to you for that. So you got into modeling. And is that what kind of led to the beauty pageants? Yeah, um, kind of. And it's funny because what happened was uh, my nail tech and my makeup artist during one of my shoots, who also was the owner of the cosmetics brand, both said to me and on separate occasions, you know, you should try, you know, plus size pageants. There's a new one in the state, blah, 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 blah. So that's really how it was. And I'm like... What the heck? All right. What do I have to lose? Right. And then what happened was I went through like the tryouts and I made it and I competed only to be done with it. It was like, okay, it's one of these things I could say I've done and that's it. I'm done. I, I, I placed really well. I placed high, but I did not win the main crown. I was the first runner up. So it was no big deal. I was like, I did great for my first time. Yes, absolutely. Perfect. So I was, you know, I was done. So I thought, and then I was recruited to compete again and I didn't place. And that was, you know, a t that particular one was very ty tiring and took a lot out of me because it was out of state and I had to travel a lot to go to the rehearsals and things like that. And just to even get there was bad because it was snowing mm -hmm. in North Carolina and flights got canceled and I had to get there to compete. <laughs> and I ended up having to drive my car with my, I asked my brother and my sister-in-law to come with me and that same night make the 10 hour drive to New York. Wow. So I can compete. <laughs> so was the weather bad up there too? Um, well, the thing about it is that in New York, they can handle the snow. It wasn't like blizzard, like what we've been seeing lately in the right, North, right. but it was still, you know, and I'm originally from New York. So, you know, I'm used to been driving in the snow and things like that. But when okay, you're flying yeah. from the south, you know, everything shuts down, everything cancels out. And, and so, so that yeah. was the thing. So we ended up making, making the drive. <laughs> and so how many pageants have you been in um, so far? I have done three. I actually am about to do a fourth. And this, I will, I want to say, let's see, this will probably be my, I think this will be my last one, I think. You think so? I think so. I will see. We'll see. <laughs> we'll so, see. so the one that's coming up, let's talk about that one for a minute. Um, okay. You said it's in, it's going to be in Atlanta mm -hmm. and it is, is this the, this is the sorority, what is it? The... So let me explain that one with the sorority pageant. So I'm actually crowning my successor at that one. Gotcha. So what hap what's happening is I'm part of the, the pageant is part of a system called Royal Productions and Royal Productions currently has five pageants under that system. Okay. So over the course of the weekend, they're going to have a few of the pageants. Mm 
So the national sorority pageant is one, which I will crown my successor and it's actually the inaugural pageant. And I served as the face since 2019. So I'm looking forward to help, help you know, with building that pageant and crowning my successor for that. But then during that same weekend, there is a prevailing Queens pageant, which are for past winners of that system. Got so you. in 2018, I had won the title of American Beauties Plus Woman. So basically it's like a, a pageant all-stars. So past winners from this pageant system compete for like the ultimate title. Nice. <laughs> so so that's what I, I'm going to be competing in. So, so for the um, National Sorority uh, pageant, mm -hmm. you won that pageant. So it was a, the so what happens is, so what happens with this pageant is, and what new pageants, what they do when there's a new pageant, they appoint a queen. Got you. And that queen, you know, serves as the face to market, do the community service and things like that. So they usually have an uh, inaugural queen for new pageants. So it's, it's, you know, so it's not like you just have a pageant and you crown someone for the first time. You have someone to serve as your queen. And then you have the inaugural pageant, so you can have a succession, oh, so to that speak. That is mm -hmm. amazing. That is amazing. Mm -hmm. That should be it. That should be a uh, pretty interesting. Like, uh, that should be pretty interesting. It is. It's it's an honor when you're uh, given this title based on what the, you know, the work that you've done, the things that they've seen you do. So. And real quick, just sidebar, because I always be having these sidebars. So you're a member of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. Yes. I want to know, I felt so bad for y'all last year. Yeah. What are are, are y'all going to try to get like for the, for the centennial? So they had, a, so they're not going to. No, I will say at least I had the opportunity to be at the January events. So I was able to be there at Howard at midnight. There were different events happening, concerts and gala. So I, I, you know, you know, fortunately was able to participate in the January events. So it is sad that we didn't get to do June because I was ready. It sucks. It sucks. Yeah. And what happened was they were doing a, an author's showcase where they selected, you know, Zaders who are authors that were going to be able to sell their books and actually speak on a stage at the convention center. And I was actually ch selected to be one of the authors and to now not be able to do that <laughs> was it really just that broke my heart. If there was I anything. Know. That really bothered me about J not having June celebration was that because I think for me, that was an opportunity to reach over ten thousand people Absolutely. with my book. Hopefully, um, they'll um, do something like that for your next um, boule. Maybe it's a it's a, it's a thought. I mean, it would it would be nice. It would be nice. But yeah, that's the you know that's what really broke my heart. But mm -hmm. I have January, so I, at least I have something. And I feel bad for those who couldn't attend January mm -hmm. and we're looking forward to June. Well, that's good. So, well, that brings us to um, your the the fact that you are also an author. So, I I want to know. Let me see. Okay. Well, first of all. Did you become an author before or after you finished your PhD? I remember I, re <laughs> I remember being on Facebook and seeing like your statuses and stuff about um you know your PhD <laughs> journey and it's the same type of statuses I see with everybody that has doing a PhD a PhD journey and they're just like oh my god I'm just ready for this to be over. So wh which one came first? Actually, I started writing, but it wasn't that book. Not many people know that I wrote as with a group of other professionals in higher education. This is before, you know, losing a job. I wrote a book with them called College Students in Transition, an annotated bibliography. So basically what we did is we looked at the research that was out there on students transitioning in college, but not the first year students because everyone always seemed to look at first year students. Yeah. So we looked at other groups of students. We looked at the transfer students. We looked at the international students. We looked at the adult students. Um, student um, 
those who were doing exchange programs, you know, not necessarily from one country to another, but just within just different universities within a state, for example. So it was just a quite a bit that, and you know, veterans. So we we focused and looked at the research that was out there, and ways to help those special populations trans transition into into college. So it was funny because I was the only one that was still working on my my doctorate, my degree, and everyone else had was done and had their degree for years. Mm -hmm. But I was in, I was honored to have been a part of the pro you know the project, and no one ever you know treated me any any differently. And that was in 2013, I wanna say it was published. So that book is still out. And then I wanna say about a year and a half, almost two years ago, I decided, well, it was encouraged that I write a book and, and share my story because people, you know, like, like you said, you've seen things that I've been doing. You've been following my social media and folks will say, well, you need to really write about this. And I was sure that once I wrote my dissertation, I was not going to write anything, anything else. else. <laughs> I was done. I was done. But then this book came about where it gave me an opportunity to talk about my story and how I came to love myself. And the book is called Waste, W-A-I-S-T, Does Not Equal Worth, The Curvy Doc's Guide to Positive Self-Esteem. And the curvy doc is um, the name that I go by. And it's, it's you know, it's on Amazon and it's been a, you know, a great way for me to share my journey. And I, you know, I was very transparent in, in the book about the things that I went through. And it talked about, of course, me going through, you know, this whole modeling journey and then decided to do it. And then I provided some tips to help others find the love within themselves. That is amazing. So I'm definitely um, going to, I have not ordered the book, but I am definitely going to order the book and read it myself. And I'm going to encourage everybody else to order it because you guys know how I get on here and I talk about loving yourself. And I, I don't think that a lot of people okay so when you're when you're a plus size woman especially a black mm -hmm. woman like mm -hmm. i don't think people really understand the pressure behind it it's like it's like the pressure to be like perfect um you know what i mean because you have okay people are looking at you and automatically you're thinking they're looking at you because of your weight. And a lot of people are looking at you because of your weight. So you have to make sure that you step everything else up. And I'm not talking about just socially. I'm talking about walking into an interview. Mm -hmm. There any other type of opportunities? Like it's a lot that <laughs> it's a lot that goes into like literally being a plus size woman a plus size black woman and i know for me i it took me some time to grasp you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. it took me some time to like really settle in and love myself and you know figure out that okay none of this stuff that other people are really looking at really matters but I know that some people it's hard for some people to get there so that's it's when hard. you have yeah and that and that's when you have um this trickle down effect of very negative things that may come along with it because you'll have people that are like starving themselves to lose weight or who just really can't even look, take a look in the mirror or you know no matter how many people tell them that they're beautiful like they just can't see it because of the weight what i found for myself that it wasn't really the weight it was everything going on just in my head it was so many mm -hmm. different things that were going on in my head so it will be great to hear your story you know what i'm saying it'll be great to to read the book and and hear your story to see how you were able to get to um loving yourself and being such a such a great um pillar in a community especially for plus size women and I really appreciate you for that. So I'm definitely yes, gonna I get the book. You. Yes. Yeah, I see I, I like I said I'm not on Facebook a lot. I, I'm on Instagram because of the podcast. I really like actually after I was doing the social media for professional relaxations, like I it burnt me out of social media. Like seriously. Like I've I was 
I left social media alone for like two years, not completely, but like just really was not on there because I was just sick and tired of it. But I follow, I've, I've, like I said earlier, I've followed you on Instagram and I've just kind of followed your story and it's, I, I admire everything that you have done um, just with yourself, getting your doctorate, everything. You've just really just been great. So <laughs> well, thank you. And you know, I, I mean, I'm just like, I'm trying to get my life like everybody else because I just feel like my, my stuff was not together. I was like, I ain't got no job. No, did you know I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do? And then I got a job, which then allows me the flexibility to try these other things. And they mm. have actually been very supportive of my pageantry. You know, they, you know, they've even attended. I had a staff member attend um, the preliminaries when I did my first pageant, and they did a little celebration for me. When, even though I came first runner up, you know, so it's little, it's like little things like that was was really great for me. Um, yeah, and it's and so good you know, to have think, a job that's supportive like that. Yeah, it, it is, you know, and, you know, I think me losing my job in a profession that I was, you know, in love with, I think was a blessing in disguise. And I, I didn't see it then because I had no clue that that was going to lead me to what I'm doing now. No clue. No clue. If you had asked me about this five years ago, six years ago, I would say, mm -mm, I don't know what you're talking about. You You want something? No idea. No clue. Isn't it crazy how that works? Very, <laughs> very. <laughs> I, I sometimes I, I I'm shocked myself. Honestly, sometimes I bet. I'm like, what in the world? What what is this? You know, <laughs> like really? <laughs> it's amazing though. It's amazing. I know. So I'm. So when you look at, I was on your website and um saw the picture of you. The I think you had on a yeah you had on a white dress and a picture of you and your crown. What do you feel when you look at that picture? It is such a beautiful freaking picture, Janelle. Like, I just be looking at it like, oh, my God, look at this. She's a beauty queen. Like, how do you feel when you look at that picture? Man, let me tell you. Now, when I look at that picture, I'm like, whoo, this quarantine weight got to go. <laughs> Baby, you ain't telling me. You Are you not telling me? Like, you are not telling me. I... And it's funny because I had to get photos done for marketing and I actually, that dress, I borrowed from someone. So, you know, sometimes models don't always have everything yeah. in their closet like you think. So I was like, I need something. And I was like, you know, I needed white. And I'm like, hmm, a fellow um, queen from an, um, this uh, different, one of the pageants I competed in, but we didn't compete in the same year. But we connected. She was like, I have something for you you can use. And she actually had, you know, lent me a few outfits I could wear for photo shoots and some of my pageant events. That's what that's what we all do now. We 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 help each other out. Um and when I saw those pictures, I was even in shock because I was like, wow, sometimes you just never know what the photo's gonna look like until you see it right back at you. And sometimes the, you know, when you do you're doing a pose and you think. In your head, oh, this ain't a good pose. I don't know why I'm right. doing this. This is not my good side. <laughs> but then when you see it, you're like, what? And I'm a type of person when I have an opportunity to, with the, the photographer, go through the photos. You know, some people could just go through and be like, okay, I like this one, that one. I'm like, oh, snap. You know, I'm right. very animated because one, I really am enjoying what I'm seeing, but too, I also want to give the photographer their props as right. well and let them know how much I, I'm like, wow, I'm in awe of what I'm, I'm seeing right now. These photographers you know, it, it, are they are great. Gotta, Y'all got to work together with the photographers because, yeah, it, uh, yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing how they see something totally different than what you you know, think is, is happening. It's like, they, they're amazing. Like, I, I just don't know if I could really do it. I mean, I, I talk about this expensive camera that I bought a long, you know, I've been talking about it for a year that I have not picked up, but I, some, there's something inside of me that just feel like I'm not going to be able to capture <laughs> these moments. Like, you know, like these great photographers do. So like, yeah, big up to these photographers. So really? before we get out of here, Janelle, 
can you just tell us how we can, how the audience can um, find you, your website, your social media handles and things of that nature? Absolutely. So you can find me on the Janelle V. Kirby Doc on Instagram. You can find me also, I have a Facebook business page, which is Janelle the Curvy Doc Simmons. I also have a website, JanelleSimmons.com. And any questions you want to email me, of course, you can contact me through my website, but my email is info at JanelleSimmons.com. And I'll make sure that I have all of that stuff in the show notes. So real quick, um, I have to do a quick shout out. Uh, let's see podcast happy hour i think this is gonna air before podcast happy hour so podcast happy hour is february 20th this month i am the host y'all already know it's black history month and it's gonna be real black it's gonna be black as hell y'all already know I've said it over and over when I figured out that I was going to be the host this month. So I hope that you all tune in. It'll be February 20th on this platform. Um, you'll be able to see it on YouTube and Facebook Live, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 Central Standard Time, and 6 uh, Pacific Time. We have people in all three <laughs> time zone so it's always crazy for us to try to get together. But anyways, so I hope to see y'all there. and. Um, that's that'll do it. Thank you so much, Dr. Janelle Simmons, for coming Thank on you. the Lit Life podcast. Um, I emailed you, you got right back to me, and I really appreciate that. I wanted to highlight you for Black History Month, and I will do, and that's gonna <laughs> I'm be good. honored. I am, and let me tell you before you cut me off because <laughs> I have to tell you, I've been watching you as well. So to see your your journey, and when you were you know running the marathons, and now you podcasting, and let me tell you, I started trying to do a podcast. You got to be damn good to do a podcast. So kudos to you. Thank you. I've, I've struggled quite a bit. And I'm going to try to get back into it. Girl, but I, mean, I, and, you and are I am the podcast amazing. plug, by the way. So <laughs> if you need help with anything, and I mean this, if you need help with anything, like any questions you have, anything like that, I am here to help. I will help you with that. I have no problem I with it. I appreciate that. And I hope you come back and travel because... We got to, I mean, the, the, those, those good old days were Girl. fun, okay? <laughs> and it's after time. what we go through with this panorama, the panini, with everything we want to call it. <laughs> it is time. I, and I did. I told myself that if I didn't come this year, that I'm definitely on board for next year. And I be telling people all the time, like, listen... Because when I used to travel all the time, you know, when I was doing those trips every year, and people were like, how are you doing this? And I'm like, look, payment plan. I get a payment plan for the trip. I get a payment plan for the flight. I mean, that's just how it has to go. And I'm, I am, I, I do plan on coming back to travel. I miss y'all. We had so, y'all, when I went to Cabo, I'm going to have to get on here and Cabo tell that story one, one of my time. favorite trips, yes. Dog, <laughs> I, I just cannot even believe how drunk I was. Like, I can believe it, but I can't believe it. Like, just looking back, I'm like, I cannot believe how drunk I was. And maybe I'll come and tell that story one day. But but yes, yeah, so I will. And I and thank you. Thank you for following me and keeping up with me. And um, we, we definitely have got to do this again. For real. Yes. And of course, uh, we, I will be seeing you soon. And I'm going to get you to use that camera <laughs> soon. Girl, I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I, I, just, <laughs> I, I just be picking it up like I, I tip, I got it initially to like for stream, like for this to do different streaming so that I can have like different angles and stuff. So I'm still working on that. <laughs> but I think e eventually I'm going to pick. I paid too much damn money for it. So I'm definitely going to use it. But Good. absolutely. <laughs> so. All right. Well, thank you again. And guys, until you hear me again. Peace. Bye.